just like to offer a big shout out to Touchdown Digital, the sponsor of this week's video. Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name's Glenn Samuel. So good to have you here and you're watching Sniper Photography. Look, today's video is about, um, well, it's a gear related video and I don't usually do many of these. Um, recently, I posted a video up on this channel uh, pertaining to all the lenses that I use, but I did um, deliberately omit a lens, a particular lens that I don't usually use for my landscape photography. Now, the reason for that is, is that this particular lens I use um, for my commercial photography, about 80% of the time actually, that I use this particular lens. And the lens that I'm talking to you about is this. It's a 24 millimeter tilt shift lens. Okay. A very specialized piece of equipment. Okay, tilt shift lens. Now I do use this for landscape photography only about probably eight, maybe nine, maybe 10 times a year. And the reason for that is, is that if I um, want to photograph a particular scene and I need extreme depth of field with technical um, sharpness, not optical uh, sharpness, I'll do another video on optical sharpness at a later date, two different things here. You achieve technical um, sharpness with a tilt shift lens. And I will be taking this out into the field and I will show you what it is, how I use it and why I use it. But just quickly here today, I use this because if I want to photograph a scene that I want to print, now I print a lot of my images, but if I'm going to print a really large print, and I mean prints that are huge, I mean 127 centimetres, you know, anything, anything above A plus 3 or A3 plus, um, this is why I use this lens. And I'll show you a couple of examples here throughout this video and you'll see what I'm talking about, the extreme depth of field. Now, the thing with these lenses are, is that you're, there's a thing called a, a Schemflug principle. And I won't go into that here, but you can, I'll put the link to that um, in, in the description box below here. But these lenses are just absolutely incredible to use. Now, traditionally, um, tilt shift lenses are used for architectural photography and real estate photography, but they're also very good for landscape photography. With the architectural side of things, we use these lenses to stop the conversion of lines. Now, nine times out of 10, when you take a photograph of a building, people sort of like angle the camera up and that's when you, you get the building like that. It looks like the building's gonna fall in on itself or fall backwards. But with the shift function on this lens, which I will describe and show you out in the field when I do that other video, that I can correct. You can correct those, those converging lines. And it looks like the building is not falling over, it's straight. The problem that you have with a normal lens is that the, the focus plane is the same as what your lens is doing. It's like this. You've got a wall. So, but with um, tilt shift lenses, this is a 3.5 24mm. Uh, they're all manual focus lenses, they're not autofocus. Um, they are great for landscape photography when you want to capture a real um, sharp depth of field. Now, most landscape photographers, and I do it as well, either shoot between 11, f11 and f16. Uh, now, I'm going to um, bust the myth, or bust the bubble, for people that think that if they close their lens down to f16, they're going to make their background sharper. That's not how it works. Effectively what you're doing, you're lessening or you're reducing the softness of the image. Now, when you take a photograph with a normal lens and you um, print that photograph large, you know, a large print, and you have a close look at it, or look at the photographs on a big screen, you will see 
an element of softness towards the background. But with a tilt shift lens, you don't get that because you're actually tilting the lens down like that. And that brings the focus down like so. If I'm at f16, I'll try and describe it here. If I'm at f16, it's like that. So it gets thicker. So towards the back, you're starting to get that soft image. But with a tilt shift lens, when I tilt that lens down onto the foreground, it's extending the field of focus or the focus point. So it's moving away from the center plane of the sensor or in the olden days film. Because effectively what these lenses are, these lenses replace the old bellows um, cameras like Ansel Adams used to use where they had the big bellows at the front and they moved them all like this. We can virtually get that copied with a tilt shift lens. Now, they do take a bit of getting used to. Um, it'll be better for me to, just, to show you out in the field why I use it, how, to, how you use it. But it's something that I don't use all the time. Now, if you are a Canon or Nikon shooter, they do make um, tilt shift lenses. If you're a Sony, Fuji or anything else, uh, Micro Fur Thirds, Olympus, you've really only got one option and that's the Samyang 24mm. Uh, f3.5 which people know that I do own Samyang lenses and they are very very good and they're half the price of the Canon and Nikon but more about that in a moment so by tilting the lens down without moving the camera the camera stays straight you can't use these handheld you have to be on a tripod got all these knobs and dials and things they're quite an intricate sort of piece of kit and that's why they're expensive because not many people use them and they do take a lot of making in the manufacturing so that's why they're expensive you also just can't go into a normal camera shop and buy one of these you have to order it um, and get it ordered in uh, you give a deposit and then hand it over because they are expensive you're looking at three and a half thousand dollars here just for this so they are expensive and they're very expensive if you're only going to use them half a dozen times a year. But I use this for commercial photography, so I can, you know, I'm making a dollar from it. But I do take it out into the landscape every now and again. And it's quite funny when people see you using a lens like this, they're blown away. They say, what the heck? What, my God, what is that lens? And then you, it turns into a mini workshop with people. But um, the tilt shift lens really is, I mean, if you can afford one and you print a lot of images, especially big images, um, a tilt shift lens might be for you but as I said if you're a, if you're a non-canon or Nikon shooter you've only got the one option that's the Samyang um, there is another brand out there it's an Iowa but the Samyang um, is very very good and it's half the price about $1,800 even then it's still a lot of money if you're only going to use it two or three times a year so think about that you're better off hiring one uh, hiring a tilt shift lens before you actually outlay your hard-earned dollars on one of these lenses but once you get this right, the end results of your images are outstanding. And as you can see in these images here, just absolutely fantastic um, what you can do with them. Um, but yeah, they're heavy. It's an 82 millimeter front. Um, so you need a fairly, you know, large, say 82 millimeter filter. Um, such as the circular polarizer and so forth, step up or step down rings. But it really is, as you can see all these knobs here, and it twists and turns and it goes like this and moves either side. I will demonstrate this and I'll also show you why these are fantastic to shoot panoramas with because, as we all know, when we shoot a panorama, we're moving the camera and the lens like that. With the tilt shift lens, you don't move the camera. The camera stays straight and the lens goes, you move the lens, you shift the lens like that. When you do a panorama with a tilt shift lens, you don't get the mo effect or the bow. And I can tell you now, when you put that into Lightroom and Photoshop, Lightroom and Photoshop will love you to death because it's less work for that program to do because they don't have to correct that bowing and you don't have much cropping to do either so they're absolutely fantastic to shoot panoramas with but it comes at a cost um, the we'll talk about the 
the pros and the cons. The cons are obviously the cost, um, the weight, also to the all manual focus, they're not auto focus, so you've got a manual focus. If you're like me and you grew up and learnt with all manual gear, it's a no brainer. But if you're, and you should be really manual focusing your landscape images anyway, quite frankly, but it is manual focus, it's heavy, and the, you can't buy one of these second hand, forget it. You've got more chance of having lunch with the Pope than buying one of these second hand because when you've got one and you know how to use it, you'll never sell it. It's a phenomenal lens. Uh, zeroed out like this, this is just a normal 24 millimeter lens. It's not until you start to tilt this part of the lens down that it becomes a tilt shift lens. Now, when I take this out of the field to show you how I use it, I probably apply one to two, mil one to two degree of tilt down this way a lot of people that are new to using these tilt shift lenses put too much tilt in. Um, only one to two degrees tilt, that's all you need. Another good thing um, with a tilt shift lens is that instead of um, thinking that I need to shoot at f16 to get everything pin sharp, which you won't, um, and you've got your foreground, you might have some wildflowers or something moving with the breeze, and you still want that great depth of field, the only thing you can really, the only two things you can really do here is to increase your ISO, which doesn't matter how good your camera is handling high ISOs, you're still going to have a problem um, with grain. Or you can focus stack at different shutter speeds. Well, that takes a lot of time, and I'd rather get it right out in the field, use a lens like this, and do it in one shot. So if I've got a, a strong foreground with some nice wildflowers, got a beautiful mid-ground and a great background, but I want everything to be pin sharp, I can shoot, and one of these images you'll see here again, that was taken at f5.6, and yet I was able to achieve a great um, depth of field, a technical um, sharpness, instead of optical sharpness. Because remember, when you close your lens down to f16 or even f11, thinking that you're getting a sharp background. You're not getting a sharp background. What you're doing is you're, you're lessening, you're making the, um, the softness less. Um, but with a tilt shift lens, you don't have that. But um, I will show you when I take you out into the field with this. So I thought I'd just let you know, it's a great lens to use. I don't really use it all that often, but tilt shift lenses, um, if you want one, you like it, you wanna use it, rent one first. Um, but by geez, if you are really uh, adamant that you want to print your images and print good size images and you really don't want to go into the focus stacking and you don't have time or you don't even know how to do it, a tilt shift lens will save you so much time and the results you get by using a tilt shift lens for your landscape photography, especially when it comes to depth of field or panoramas when you shift the lens, not the camera, you don't move the camera, the results are outstanding. And um, I think I might use this lens more often, actually. It, um, I do enjoy using it. It is a challenge. Um, also, I will show you that you, you can't use this tilt shift lens through your viewfinder. You need to use your live view on the back of your camera um, to move your focus points. So you move your focus point to the middle you focus and then you tilt the lens down until everything comes into focus and you're done. And that can be, the idea is you can shoot at very wide open apertures, f4, f3.5 and still retain a fantastic depth of field without that softness that you get when you go to f11 or f16. Great lens to use, um, unfortunately they are very expensive. Um, they are a challenge to use but once you get to know how to use one, they are phenomenal. And that's the 24mm f3.5 tilt shift lens. Uh, in the next video, I'll take you out, out into the landscape and I'll show you exactly how to use this phenomenal piece of kit, the 24mm f3.5 tilt shift lens. So that's it for another episode of Sniper Photography. Um, I'll see you out in the field. 
I hope you enjoyed this one. Please put your comments and thoughts down below. I'd certainly get back to you as soon as I can. So as I always say, be nice to yourself, family and friends. But most of all, you keep shooting. Keep smiling. Bye for now.